Well, there are heightened tensions today over who was behind a pair of attacks that took place at two of Israel's embassies, one at India and one at Georgia. Now, in New Delhi, India, an Israeli diplomat's car was destroyed and at least four people injured, including a diplomat's wife who was in the car. Now, a bomb targeting the Israeli embassy in Tbilisi, Georgia, was actually diffused before it went off. Now, Israel, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is blaming Iran. And in, if this is the case, it may believe it's in retaliation for a series of killings of Iranian nuclear scientists. Iran, though, has denied any involvement, but no question, this will serve to make worse what is already a pretty bad situation in relations between the two countries. To discuss this, I'm joined now by Stephen Lindman, writer, host, and Pro Progressive Radio News Hour. Hey there, Stephen. Um, as of now, there are a couple of viewpoints out there regarding this bombing and attempted bombing. The one in India was carried out using motorcyclists carrying sticky bombs, very similar to what happened last month in Tehran, uh, in which an Iranian nuclear scientist and his driver were killed. Iran says, though, this is all a lie and a propaganda campaign facilitated by Israel. Um, how do you think the rest of the world is viewing this? Well. Uh, in America, you can you can guess what the headlines are. I haven't checked. Uh, uh, I really watch American TV. I can barely contain myself when I do it. But I'm certain the accusations against Iran and Hezbollah will flow thick and fast. If I had to blame anybody, and I certainly don't have any evidence, but if, but if I had a, if I had to name my top suspect, it would be Mossad. I mean, Mossad, I mean, the fingerprints of, of attacks like this or attempted attacks have Mossad's fingerprints all over them. But recall last October, the alleged plot against the Saudi ambassador in Washington that Iran supposedly planned. Uh, the charges didn't pass the smell test. It didn't even rise to the level of a B-movie. And yet, and yet headlines raged in America for days. People in other countries just laughed at them. The charges were so ludicrous. Israel makes charges. America makes charges, Christine. But no evidence is provided. But Stephen, China, what, what motivation would the Mossad, Israel's intelligence agency, um, have for targeting two Israeli embassies? Well, the motivation would be to blame it on Iran and Hezbollah. I mean, Israel has no compunction about killing Jews as well as anybody else if it serves their intention. America has no compunction about killing Americans. They send Americans into the meat grinders of war, simply have no interest in their security or welfare when they come home uh, in, in terrible condition, emotionally, physically. They're treated very, very marginally. They don't get the care they needed. Israel is pretty much the same way. But, but you always need to ask one key question when something like this comes up. Ki bono. What on earth would Iran have to gain by ratcheting up tensions when there are so many accusations flowing against Iran right now? Again, no evidence substantiates anything, including its alleged nuclear weapons program that's entirely bogus, according to U.S. intelligence. As of March 2011, there's no evidence whatever proving it. IAEA has no evidence proving it. But you sure hear the, the headlines incessantly. Israel is making them. The U.S. media are making them. And again, lots of accusations, no charges. Key bono on the latest ones and the so-called um, uh, Saudi ambassador plot. Iran can't possibly have anything to gain by doing something. That's like what it seems like to me. It seems to me that there's already so many people looking for an excuse to launch an attack against Iran um, that it would be, you know, it's a little troubling to, to wonder what their motivation might be. Um, but, you know, there are people out there, Stephen, who say Israel, I mean, not Israel, Iran is testing the waters. They want to see uh, how far, you know, these threats will go against them. I mean, is there any value to that thought? Oh, there's no value at all. The history of Iran in the past 200 plus years is Iran has not attacked another country in at least 200 years, maybe 300 years. Iran threatens no one in the region. The only time Iran went to war was when it was attacked 
by Saddam Hussein. And a million Iranian lives were lost, 400,000 Iraqi lives were lost, and America's dirty hands were behind the entire thing. It began with Jimmy Carter at the end of the 1970s. It continued under Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. Iran was victimized. America wanted Iran destroyed. America really wanted them both destroyed, but preferably Iran, and it, and it helped both sides, but much more helping Saddam than it was token help for Iran. Uh, and again... Oh, I was just going to say, I want to, um, before we get too, too far off track, I want to still go back to, I know you were talking earlier about the Mossad, um, and we saw last week an inv investigation by NBC News that revealed those killings of Iranian nuclear scientists were carried out by Israel's Mossad, along with the help of the Iranian dissident group, the MEK. Um, I want to play for a second something that Mohammed Larajani said. He's a senior aide to Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, um, and I'll get your reaction and we'll talk about it. If a country is aware that the close allies of that country, like United, like Israel, is involved in notorious terrorist activity, United States has an obligation to prevent it, to push Israel not to do it, to pursue it like pursuing us in the United Nations with different resolutions. So what do you think about this? He says that, you know, if the United States knows that uh, Israel is carrying this out, they have an obligation um, to take action. Oh, they absolutely do. I mean, international law is clear. U.S. law is clear. If there are legitimate charges, the New York Times wrote about this, fingering Mossad. Astonishing. I, I wrote about it. I quoted the New York Times. It is absolutely astonishing that the New York Times would, would, would charge Mossad with, an, with a tax like this. Uh, I have no doubt that, that Mossad's fingerprints are, are all over this. I imagine CIA has some involvement, too. And, and they use proxies, MEK or other uh, anti-regime forces in Iran or other countries. I mean, this goes on all the time. All right. Uh, uh, we are out of time, but I want to thank you so much. Uh, a lot of interesting things to talk about. Important also to give that different perspective than what we're seeing in a lot of the headlines in the mainstream media. Stephen Lenman, writer and host of the Progressive Radio News Hour.